Hey guys, how's it going? In this part of the video, we'll be talking about how to transmit the messages from our server onto a recipient. Um, we have nailed uh, the uh, the stuff about receiving messages, um, so I'm going to take that off. Um, done. Yay. Um, and that as well. Oops, that was spacious. That was spacious. <laughs> um, <coughs> so, yeah, done, done. Uh, done 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 that's done um, now we need to do the send a message thing uh, and I as, and as I described earlier we're gonna have a atomic uh, transaction way of sending a message so rather than having an open channel at all times um, just um, connect send message dis disconnect you know, so quite um, fast and sneaky you know um, so m moving along on that route um, we're going to need some bits for this as well. Um, not a lot of bits. Um, not as much as uh, the message listener stuff. Um, but some bits. So we're going to create a new class called... Whoops, not a package. No, not a package. Oh. Okay, job class called message... Oh, message transmitter, if I can spell. Yes. Um, message transmitter. Uh, this is just going to be a normal class without any thread. I mean, it would be nice to have a thread because, um, you know, this is um, this, this could take time, and we don't want to um, uh, we we don't want to um, get the UI to be you know um, nasty when it's trying to send a message. Um, actually, you know, we'll do just that. We'll we will make this a thread. So let's make this a thread. Extends thread. Yay! We have a thread. Uh, and we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ha override the run method. Yeah, but before we do that, let's override the uh, constructor. So just have, um, and we need a message, host name, and port. So let's create those variables first. Uh, message is string. Uh, message, host name is also string. So host name, and port is integer. So int port. And let's just keep that uh, as it is, and make another one. Message, it's transmitter, uh, and oh, actually no, I think NetBeans has clear, clever stuff. There we go, love that. <laughs> this is the reason why I love NetBeans. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, now let's override the run method. Uh, run method will be run. There we go, override. Such an awesome ID. Oh my god. Um, yes, <laughs> um, run method, uh, in the run method we are going to connect to the server, send data, disconnect, right? So, let's create a socket. Remember, socket connects to the server socket. The server socket receives a socket. Yeah, cool. Socket, um, uh, s equals new socket, and when you do that, you'll get the, this bit, uh, that bit, sorry, that's more important for us. Uh, host name and port. Uh, so we're going to have host name and port. Um, see how nice that means. Uh, surround statement with a try catch. Yes. Um, and yep. Now we're going to now we're going to do some uh, magic here. Uh, we're going to send the data um, as bytes, not as a string. Now this is very easy to do. Um, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to make some mystery. Uh, I'm just trying to make this more mysterious, but it's not really mysterious at all. Um, so s dot um, get output stream, you know, because you're sending the output, so you want the output stream, and then you want to put something in the stream, and then that will flow in the stream onto the onto our target. So get output stream. Um, oops. Uh, yeah. So and then you can just do dot uh, write. So that method. Um, and in B we can do message dot get bytes so that converts the message into bytes yeah perfect now that's done we'll close the socket so s dot close um, and boom that's it uh, let's just go through this again uh, this is a class which extends thread uh, in this class we have three global variables which is uh, and they are there because we need them uh, we need the message, so we need to know what to send. We need host name because we need to know uh, where to send it, and we need we need port because we need to know at what port to send the message to. Uh, 
And then we have two uh, public constructors. Uh, one's an empty one. This is because I'm really paranoid. And the other one is just a normal one where we accept uh, these three arguments, um, uh, make them store inside this inside inside this object, and then we do the run thing. Yeah, cool. So now that's saved. Um, uh, what we'll do now is we'll go back to the main screen stuff, uh, and now we need to integrate our back end uh, to our front end. Uh, now this is our front end. You know all of the beautiful stuff um, and we need to integrate this now normally you would write in integration tests and all of that uh, for this thing we don't really ne need to write integration tests because this is a homegrown project um, so um, we're just gonna we're just gonna wing it you know um, so the listen button needs to be overridden so that it will listen on wherever the port you provide here so if you just double click that, it will open up a method and just let you do everything, all of the, all of the magic. Um, uh, in here, we need to initialize our message listener thread uh, and we need to have a global variable for message listener. Now, if you are very lazy, as I am, um, and uh, we all know that lazy people make the best programmers, um, we, I'm just gonna make a message listener global variable here message listener, uh, listener, uh, and import stuff, blah, 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 yeah. And in the listen button action perform method, what we'll really do is we'll have, we'll initialize the listener, uh, listener equals new, list message listener, uh, writable GUI and port. Writable GUI for this because we are, so we are re referring to the current instance of the main screen class. Um, and that class implements the writable GUI Hence, it's of type writable GUI, um, and in the port we'll say receive port oh, no, uh, dot oops, dot get um, text. Uh, but this is a integer, so we're going to surround this by integer dot parse int. Um, yeah, cool. And um, what we also need to do is, because this is a thread, we're going to have to start the thread. So, listener dot start. Boom, that's our listening done. Now we go back to design, uh, and you just have to look up our variables, uh, target port, uh, IP text field, and chat, uh, and message. Uh, so double click the send thing uh, and in here we don't really need to create a global variable or anything because this is an atomic transaction so we can just keep on doing this um, so message transmitter transmitter equals new message transmitter transmitter um, uh, and three arguments message hostname and port message is the message oh yeah text um, hostname is IP text field dot get text and um, port is our target uh, sorry uh, yes target port dot get text uh, but again this is a um, this is a int so integer in a production application you would have um, stuff like Validation, you know, validating whether it's an integer or not. Then, you know, if it's not an integer, give it a, give a pop up saying this is not an integer and stuff. Uh, for this, as I said, we're just going to wing it. Um, semicolon completes that, and then we just do transmitter dot start. Boom, that's it, basically. Um, now we go back to design, uh, and let me just see if everything's complete. Looks complete to me. Got the host name socket. Yep, it's all complete. Hoorah! Um, let's uh, run this app. Uh, but we need two instances of this, not one, because we need them to talk to each other. Um, so I'm just going to do F6 to run the channel. Oh, sorry. I need to do stuff here. <laughs> uh, we're just going to have a main screen. Um, screen, oh, it calls 
new main screen and screen I'm going to do something a bit dirty here so don't mind me using a deprecated method um, but I don't particularly care um, so yeah because that's how I roll <laughs> uh, no um, yeah let's just run this F6 boom it started here let's run another instance F6 uh, boom it started here as well so let's just um, oh Yes, these are the two things. Beautiful. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll have them. Uh, we For this instance, we're going to be listening at 8877. And obviously, this instance is going to send data to that one. Uh, and since this one is listening on port 8877, we're going to have our target port here is 8877. And uh, since this one, and we're going to change this to 8878, and since this, and since this instance is listening on port 8878, this instance is going to have to target port 8878. So 8878. Understood? Let's go through it again. This instance of the chat application is listening on port 8877, which is why if this one needs to send a message to this one it's going to have to send on port 8877. Now, if this one is listening on port 8878, then this one has to target on port 8878, which is why target of here, of this one, is 8878. Um, they both can't be listening on the same port, but they both can send on one port. Uh, but that's not the case here. That's just for information only. Um, host name is localhost. Uh, although, if... Um, your friend has a static IP or something, uh, then you can put their IP address there. If they don't have a static IP, they can still put their IP address there. There's a different way for that. It's called port forwarding. So if your friend has a router, um, um, then he's going to have to pull forward ports from the router to his computer and then do stuff. Uh, we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. Uh, so put the local host here as well, because these are both on the same machine, but on different ports. Um, now, if you're thinking that this is not a real test, this is not a real test, not in a field uh, where you, you are on the internet and you have crap loads of devices talking to each other. But this is a real enough test because uh, these are both listening on different ports. These are doing um, stuff differently. Um, so they're real enough. I mean, uh, if it works here, then it should work in real world as well. So now we're going to do the exciting thing of s sending a message. Our first message is going to be, hello. Uh, send. Oh, sorry, I forgot about this completely. We're going to have to make these things listen on uh, their ports. So just click listen, listen, and now if you send, hey, hey, hello, we got a hello. And now if we do something here, say, um, howdy, oh, howdy, how's it going? And we send here, boom, that's there. And now, we can get these to talk to each other. Not bad, mate. How are you? Send. And this one can be like. Uh, cool. Yeah, man. Not bad at all. Send. And woohoo! It's always all working. Cool. So that's the end of our, you know, chat application stuff. Um, um yeah the another thing that I was going to talk about the router and stuff is that if you're working across the internet you're going to need either a static IP to your machines so your friend has a machine which has a static IP and your machine which has a static IP and then you just cook and then you can just put your own IP addresses here um, and that should work out of the box but that's not usually the case because um, static IPs are a bit hard to get and they are complicated and you have to pay for them and all of that stuff uh, so what you can ha do is you can have a router so you just have your normal internet you have your router and you would log into the router and you would port forward um, this port on your router and your friend will also do the same thing and then you would share your IP addresses not the IP addresses of your machines the IP addresses of your routers um, there are ways to find that. You can just go on to um, um, thingy. So if you just kind of uh, new window. Uh, that 
works. Did it work? Yes, it works. Um, if you just go to my IP, uh, what's my IP? You know, that should bring up in Google. That's my IP, like, you know. Um, so, yeah, guys, um, awesome. Thank you very much for your feedback and everything. Uh, I'm really grateful for your motivation and support for this. Um, I will see you guys next time um, on another project maybe or another t tutorial. Till then, bye-bye, take care, see ya.